Well, hello there. I'm Brother Royston Price. I'm a Redemptorist uh, seminarian here at the Monastery of St Mary's in Clapham. And uh, today, on the uh, 4th April, um, I've been asked to give a little reflection. Uh, we often say that God has a, a sense of humour. Well, certainly in, in today's Gospel, we see how divine providence can make ironic use of unsuspecting prophets. Caiaphas, the high priest, is heading crisis talks, a cobra meeting to decide what must be done about this troublesome Jesus of Nazareth. If he and his little movement aren't sorted out, then it could escalate and the Roman response to unrest would be quick and brutish. Therefore, it made sense to strike down the problematic source. Better that one man die for the people than for the whole nation to be destroyed. Unwittingly, however, he spoke the truth, and in fact, an eternal truth, truth with a capital T. The politically expedient murder of our Lord to cow troublemakers, in reality, unleashed the new and eternal covenant in his blood. The old order was swept away, and the reign of sin and death was vanquished. Because, as becomes more and more clear during this time of this holy time of Lent, the cross of Christ is the ultimate symbol of victory. God's providence guided and formed an entire people living in a small corner of the Mediterranean, fashioned them to bring about the perfect set of circumstances for the appearance of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Lamb of God, whose sacrifice saved not just his own people, the Jews, but liberated the entire human race from slavery, from chains that they didn't even know they were wearing. For Christ's reign of justice and peace, the peace of Christ in the reign of Christ, is a different, it's so different to the, uh, to the Pax Romana, the peace enabled and enforced by the Roman Empire, the peace that Caiaphas and his cowardly Sanhedrin trembled before. That peace was certainly a stability that enabled the gospel to spread quickly, but it was a peace enforced at the point of a legionnaire's sword, with a terrible fate in store for those who might cause trouble for Rome or her local thugs like Herod. That peace cared little for human dignity as long as taxes kept rolling in. But the peace of Christ, the peace that the world cannot give, is a peace deep in the human heart, one which changes everything. The peace of Christ doesn't trample human dignity, but raises it to its proper situation. The peace of Christ doesn't demand slavery to an economic model or an ideological system, but freely chosen service of God and neighbour. And it's a peace that no tyrant or politician or warlord can take away. It's a light burning in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. So we pray for all those in authority, tempted to choose the easy evil over the difficult good, and for those who suffer under unjust regimes or in the midst of war zones. May the peace of Christ reign in our hearts, in our homes, in our nation, and in our world. Amen.